Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today I want to show you how to create this stunning reaction diffusion effect. Now, the thing about reaction diffusion, it's a process where you take your source image and run it through a pretty simple blur operation. And then you take the frame that results from that operation and feed it back into the same routine. And you do that over and over again until gradually you get an animation. Now, this can be quite a tedious process, but I'm going to give you a custom script that's going to make it a whole lot easier. Anyway, let's get going. OK, for the first stage of this project, what we're going to do is come over and set it up as follows. So we want 1080 by 1080. So it works much better if we create a square project for this. Landscape tends to go a bit funky. We don't care about the frame rate because our duration is going to be just one frame. So I'm going to paste in some ready-made text and it looks like this. I'm using the font called Meloriac. I've centered it all up and I've adjusted the line spacing and we're ready to go. So what we need to do is we need to just bring in a color solid. Let's make it black. And let's just move it down behind the text. So then let's close up that group and right click to make a clone of it. We can hide the original group. Let's duplicate the clone. Let's select both of these clones, come to filters and blur and Gaussian blur. We're going to set the bottom Gaussian blur to 32. And remember to turn on crop. We're going to set the top Gaussian blur to something like 72. And again, let's turn on crop. Let's set the blend mode of this top clone to subtract. And then let's select the group and come to filters and color and levels. Open up the histogram. Let's look for the white in value and set that to 0.01. Now we've still got some gaps here in the letters. They're actually quite fun if you leave those because those will start to open up quite quickly. But if you don't want to leave those there, we can come to our second Gaussian blur and we can just increase that amount till they go away. In this case, around 96 and they've, they've disappeared. Another option, of course, would be to crush that white value even more on the levels, but that's not desirable because it's going to start giving us very harsh, steppy edges. So I think it's better to try and do it this way. So now we've got this sort of soft, rounded version of our text, which is going to be the base of our effect. Now, I should make the obvious point that those blur values that I've given you are not something you have to rigidly stick to. The only thing to bear in mind is that the lower blur needs to be smaller than the upper blur. And a two to one ratio is a pretty good place to start. And the thing to understand is that the smaller those blur sizes, the more fine detail there will be in your pattern. Now, we could work with this as is, but I quite like to add a little bit of extra interest to this. So I'm going to select my bottom group and I'm going to come to filters and distortion and I'm going to look for twirl. See, that's way too much. But what we're going to do is turn on crop and also we're going to set the twirl amount to just one degree and it barely has any effect on that initial state. But because we're going to be feeding each frame back into itself, that twirl is going to just increase and increase as the frame count goes up. And it's going to look really nice, I think. So you can choose to do that or not, as the case may be. Let's stick with that. Then what we want to do is we want to start exporting this because we want to create an image sequence. Now, before we do that, we need to come to motion and settings and destinations and you want to choose save current frame and jpeg is going to be fine for this and we want to right click on save current frame and if it isn't the default set it to make default you'll probably find that export selection to movie is your default but you want to set it to save current frame that's really important so then we can come over to our share menu and save current frame let's click on next now i've already made a folder to put this in but i'm going to make a new folder inside that i'm going to call this new folder tute for tutorial and for the name of the file that we're exporting we want number one and hit save. Then let's come to the top of our project, create a new group and come to import, import media. And we're going to navigate to where we save that. So that tute folder, and we're going to bring in that image. And then we're going to open up this group here with those two clones in it. And we're going to take this new group and we're going to add it as the source of those two clones. So that one and that one, and we're going to turn off our new group and you can see something just happened there you can see that before and after and so we're now we're feeding our first render back into this algorithm here 
So that's all quite tedious. Who wants to do it all manually? So what I've done is I've made you a script that's going to make it much, much easier. So I will give you a link to this script. And if you double click it, it will open up in Apple Script and look like this. So what you'll need to do is come down to this line here and you need to reset this path for the import folder. So if we come to the folder that we were, we created and where we exported to and we select that one JPEG and we right click and we get info, we can now copy this path here the, where it says where. So select all of that copy as path name. And then if we come back to our script, we can paste it into here. In between those quote marks, we're going to paste that text. You can see that's updated. Click on the hammer to compile it. And now we can run our script. So let's hit the run the script button. And you'll see that it now saves it as number two. It imports number two and it just keeps running. Now, Apple scripts can be a bit twitchy, so do make sure you've got nothing else running in the background. Don't touch the mouse or the keyboard while it's running. Just leave it to do its thing. It will take quite a while, as you can see, but eventually it will get there. And if for any reason you want to break out of the script, bring the script window to the foreground and type command period, and that will break out of the loop. I should also point out that the first line of our script is setting the frame count. So you notice it's running from 2 to 150. So that's going to pick up from where we left off. We'd rendered frame 1. We want it to render from frame 2. And once it gets to 150 frames, it will complete. So if you stop the process and want to resume, the f you need to change that 2 to whatever number it is that is next in the sequence. And similarly, if you want more frames, change that 150 to however many frames you want. So once the render is complete, we're going to make a new project. Again, let's make it 1080 square. I'm going to go with a frame rate of 24 frames a second and a duration of 10 seconds. And then I'm going to come over and I'm going to import what we've just rendered. So import media. I'm going to navigate to the folder. I'm going to select any one of our renders. I'm going to make sure to click on image sequence and then import. And if we run it, you'll see that we get this result. And I think that twirl effect is giving us a lot of extra interest. And of course, as I showed you in my demo right at the start, you could reverse that effect to reveal the original text as well. A bit like this. So anyway, I hope you have a lot of fun with this. Thanks very much indeed for watching and I'll see you again soon.